Section 1.6 is about quadratic equations. So in this one, remember the leading coefficient has to be 1. So we need to divide both sides. Oops, sorry about that. We need to divide both sides by 2. So we get x squared minus 2x minus 1 half equals 0. Move the constant to the other side. So we have x squared minus 2x equals 1 half. Take half of 2 and square it. So half of 2 is 1 and 1 squared is 1. So we add 1 to both sides. The left side will factor into x and minus. Whatever half of this is, that was 1 and it's all squared. 1 half plus 1, 1 is the same thing as 2 over 2, right? So 1 half plus 2 over 2 will be 3 over 2. Now we take the square root of both sides and don't forget plus or minus. And you get x minus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 halves. So we need to add 1 to both sides. Let's come back up here. So we're going to have x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 3 halves. Now this isn't very good because we still have a radical in the denominator. So let's figure that part out. That's the square root of 3 over the square root of 2, right? Remember how to rationalize that? You multiply by square root of 2 over square root of 2. We get square root of 6 over the square root of 4 or the square root of 6 over 2. So x is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 6 over 2. Now you could see this written a different way. We just said that 1 is 2 over 2, right? So this is 2 over 2. Let me just write that over there. 2 over 2. So you could write it like this. 2 plus or minus the square root of 6 all over 2. The way that it was up here would have been okay. The 1 plus or minus square root of 6 over 2, that's also okay. But this is probably how you'll see the answer written. Another way, or the fourth way, to solve a quadratic equation is using the quadratic formula. Your equation must be in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, before you can use the quadratic formula. And to use this, you simply identify a, b, and c, and substitute them in the formula. So in this particular problem, a is 1, that's right here, b is 8, that's right here, and c is 6. When you have to be really, really careful is when you have negatives in here. Just be careful that you don't lose them or something like that. So x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. And now we simplify. Negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 24 all over 2. So that's negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 40 all over 2. You can break down the square root of 40. That's 4 times 10. 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. So the 2's get to come out, but these have to stay inside. So we end up with negative 8 plus or minus 2 square roots of 10 all over 2. You could factor a 2 out because these two have a 2 in common. So we get negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 10 all over 2. And then the 2 is reduced to 1. So we just get negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 10. That's how you use the quadratic formula.
So let's try a few of these. So let's try a few of these. Solve using the quadratic formula. Don't forget what the quadratic formula is, okay? Maybe you should write down a piece of paper so you can have it near you. All right, so in this particular problem, A is one, B is six, and C is 11. It is in standard form, so we just go straight to the quadratic formula. X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. That's negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 44 all over 2 negative 6 plus or minus the square root of what is 36 minus 44 that's going to be negative 8 all over 2 don't forget how to break this down the square root of negative 8 we know we're going to have an i in it so it's plus or minus the square root of 8 is 2 square roots of 2 and since there's a negative we have an i so it's 2i square root of 2 all over 2 remember whenever you have a complex number you have to keep the real and the imaginary separate so you would end up with negative 3 plus or minus i square roots of 2 and this would be the solution for that equation. Okay, so how about the next one? It's not in standard form, so we need to move the 12x over. We'll have 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals 0. All I did was subtract 12x from both sides. In this particular problem, a is 4, b is negative 12, and c is 9. So we get x equals negative b, so we have a negative of a negative 12, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So negative of a negative 12 is a positive 12. Negative 12 squared is 144. And then you have 4 times 4 times 9. That's also going to be 144. All over 8. Well, 144 minus 144 is 0. And the square root of 0 is 0. So you have... 12 over 8, which reduces to, 4 will go into both of these, right? But reduce to 3 over 2. So for this particular problem, you only have one solution. Here we go. Maybe you should try this one on your own, and then turn the video back on to see if you got it right. Sound like a plan? <laughs> okay, so for this problem, we have A is 2, B is negative 3, and c is negative 2. So x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we get negative of a negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, and negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16, all over 4. 3 plus or minus 9 plus 16 is 25. 
So we have 3 plus or minus the square root of 25 is 5 all over 4. So this is two separate problems here. 3 plus 5 over 4 and 3 minus 5 all over 4. When you reduce both of, both of those, you get 2 and negative 1 half. The discriminant is all of the stuff that is underneath the radical, the stuff right here. This is called the discriminant. And that discriminant can pretty much help you determine what kind of answer or solution you're going to get. If the discriminant comes out to be positive, like this one was a positive 25, you're going to end up with two real solutions. See how we got two real solutions here? Let's go back to the previous page. And maybe one more before that. This one. Our discriminant in this one was also positive. We ended up with two real solutions. Even though it has the square root of 10 in it, it's still a real solution. So what if you get a discriminant of 0? That happened on this page. We ended up with a discriminant of 0 here. If you get a discriminant of 0, all of that just goes away. So you just end up with this fraction right here that leaves you with one real solution. So finally, what happens if you get a discriminant that is negative? Just imagine for a second if this had been negative. If that were negative, wouldn't we get an imaginary number? I think we had one of those, this one. Our discriminant here is negative. We ended up with a, I know you can't see that, we ended up with a imaginary or complex answer. That's what this is telling you. You have zero real solutions, but you could have some imaginary ones.